So I'm just trying to figure out when you do your tax, like if you're like myself who doesn't feel comfortable doing the tax estimating like during the call, do you send them like the um, questionnaire ahead of the tax planning meeting just to maybe get the information or how do you do uh, your discovery if you? So I want to do as little work ahead of getting paid as possible okay. um, because I want them to commit. Yeah. Um, I don't want them to think that this is kind of like a free advising thing. And mm -hmm. um, I'll pitch the strategy session as a tax analysis. And I want to okay. gather as much information as I can and try to get that done in one call um, okay. without collecting a bunch of information and going okay. back. It's hard. I'll, I'll admit it's hard when you're first starting out and you're doing your first couple. But right. I think, like I was saying to Jake, I think it's really worthwhile to start practicing that like right out of the gate start practicing getting the information, thinking through having the spreadsheet up on your computer um, and, and dropping some numbers in, at least on the workhorse strategies. This is a, actually a very common question that Jake and Mary Beth have had. Um, you know, I'm not comfortable with doing it all and can I break it over several meetings? But I think something that's very important in this process is, is that we recognize as, as people get busier, you need to develop effective habits in this process and mm -hmm. you'll find that your most valuable commodity that becomes scarce is your time no it already is <laughs> yeah and so definitely you want to even if it's a no mm -hmm. it, some, sometimes finding early on that a person's not going to be a client saves you a lot of time because then you're you're on to the next who becomes a client and so mm -hmm. You know, avoiding doing any unnecessary work beforehand, like reviewing the returns unless they paid you a little bit. Um, okay. I used to do so much work for free before this program. And I'd like to say that, you know, the sales deck and everything else that we do, there's a reason and a format for it. And a lot of it has to do with like what I call professional psychology. And it, it's, it's there to help us avoid bad habits as well as to help the client um, if they're going to become a client. Uh, agree to our terms sooner and that's why it's formatted so that on one call we can and and we don't have to provide a firm estimate that's like contractual or anything but just like james mentioned you know those workhorse strategies even if we're not terribly comfortable with all 83 strategies that are in the book or whatever right but, you know let, let's get something of value there that the mm -hmm. client can see just like an engineer who's building a bridge is going to provide a a project estimate we're going to provide projected tax savings right and uh, then half of the conversation literally half of the conversation after we provide that project that projected tax uh, savings is is around getting them to pay mm -hmm. because if they don't become a client then we should stop doing work right right and, right and that's that's what why I call it professional psychology because it helps us as the professional, as well as it helps them understand the value we're adding.